So last month I got together with a couple of uh, tarot buddies um, and we did a group read of this book, which is the guide to the Tarot of the Cat People by uh, Karen Kukendall. I think that's how you pronounce her name. Um, and we did a couple of meetups. We, we split the book in half and did a couple of meetups and it was great to, um, you know, have a buddy read to motivate me to, to get through this book and to discuss it. Um, I have to say, overall, I'm underwhelmed by this deck. And I'm sorry, Julie, because you're one of the people that was in my reading group. Um, it's not it's not bad. There's nothing wrong with it, really. Um, I will say that it was uh, seems to have been written in the 80s uh, or early 90s. And so it does have some slightly odd sort of gender stereotypes um, and racial stereotypes in in the book, um, where she's saying, you know, this this culture of this group of the cat people is related to these people in Africa, and they have these traits. Um, and I sort of get what she's talking about, but I also think that she could have used um, more sensitive way of doing that. Um, it's not exactly up to today's, uh, you know, uh, more aware standards of, of how to talk about these things. Um, but that said, you know, it's interesting. Um, so if you're not familiar, the Tarot of the Cat People is built around this science fictional world of cat people where they're human beings, but they, uh, they essentially prize their cats so much that they're worshipped, they're incorporated into all aspects of life. And so she tells you about the different kingdoms in this uh, area on this planet that's the... the the kingdom of the, or the various kingdoms of the cat peoples. Um, so, for example, uh, the suit of swords um, is the ruby kingdom. It's associated with the fire people, and their colors are oranges, reds, hot pinks, maroons, and blacks. Their earth equivalent is prime vo volcanic area of Java and Hawaii. Um, and then the characteristics of the people are fatalistic, fiery, energetic, fast-moving, quick-thinking, resourceful, practical, quarrelsome, and highly adaptable. So it's interesting that she has those qualities of like quickness and adaptability and quarrelsomeness and quick thinking, um, but associated with a fire people and swords. Um, so it's a little different than maybe your typical RWS. Um, and then she goes on to discuss, you know, the landscape, the economy, the major products, the religious practices. Um, it's, it's an anthropological study, essentially, of the various cat peoples. Um, and so there's five kingdoms, one for each suit. Um, and then the deck itself is, is very beautiful. Um, and I did do a couple of readings with this, um, with help from friends. And I'll go back down here and show you some cards. Um, the, the backs are very goofy. They don't really fit with the rest of the deck, I would say. <laughs> There's this like, cartoony thing. And then, um, oh yeah, I put this in order for study. But so all of the, the images are these sort of portraits. And I mentioned this in my um, video about uh, various decks that... Um, feature portraiture, um, that that's kind of their mode of operation. And because of that, it's a little hard for me to read this because these these people feel like they've been captured in a moment of time and they don't feel very um, animated to me. They feel sort of like they're just standing there waiting for something to happen. So I find this deck rather dry, to be honest. Um, it's not unreadable, because I can look at what the card is and I can draw on that and then I can from there sort of tie it back in. So if they didn't have labels, I would probably struggle um, with this deck. I did a reading for someone and they asked me, you know, well, why did you say this and why did you say that? And I was like, well, you got the three of this and the five of that. So threes and fives mean these kinds of things for me. So it wasn't so much um, directed towards the, the imagery, but then once I kind of got the basics of the reading from, you know, my numerological kind of associations, then I was able to look and draw out a few details from uh, the imagery, um, which on the surface does not look particularly RWS-like, but then once you start to dig into it, it kind of is. So like here's the Four of Swords, for example, and you have someone at rest 
on a pillow playing with their cats, and the swords are suspended up here. So that's similar to the Four of Swords imagery in the Rider-Waite-Smith system. Um, let's see if I can find another. You know, here you have uh, the Nine of Wands, and you have this person who's sort of, you know, next to a fence made of wands, essentially. So they have that barricaded look that you would find in that card traditionally. Um, there's aspects of this deck that I like. I like the color schemes. I love the costumes. I would love to own one of these beautiful costumes. I think that would be super cool to do like a cosplay of the Tarot of the Cat people. Um, but in terms of an everyday reader and something that I'm I'm like excited to reach for in readings, I can't I can't really say that this is that because it's not bad. It just may not be for me entirely. Um, but yeah, so that's Tarot of the Cat people. Um, I'm glad that I got my hands on it. I'm glad I got to try it out. Um, it's just one that's sort of not really my niche because uh, I'm not a cat person. 